Hello, I'm Larry Makovich, IHS Chief Power Researcher, and I'd like to welcome you to IHS Zero Week 2013 On Demand. Now with me today is Jim Hughes. He's the CEO of First Solar. And Jim, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you know, we just uh, had a panel, you were great, on the uh, power engineering, construction, and equipment business. And I think having you on the panel is kind of uh, proof that solar is now kind of mainstream power energy. Well, that's what we like to believe, and that's why we're here. Uh, uh, we think that the costs have gotten, been reduced to the point that we present an economic uh, proposition that is significant and meaningful, uh, and you know it will take its place in the, the broad mix of uh, generation choices available to utilities on a global basis. Now the cost and performance of solar is something that's gotten a lot of attention and people focus on the cost on the panels. Uh, there were kind of two things that came up today that I thought were interesting, something a lot of people don't necessarily see. One is that people don't tend to take into account the value of solar as a hedge against the volatility of the other fuel inputs to power generation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, one of the characteristics of um, a solar power sale that we're trying to focus our customer set on and get them to think more about is we offer you a flat power price for 25 years. Um, all of the cost is up front. Uh, there's very little operating cost and it certainly doesn't have a significant inflation component to it. So as compared to a gas-fired unit or a coal-fired unit, um, you have a power price that is reliably flat for the next 25 years. So there is a value to that. There is a risk mitigation, a fuel hedge to that. You know, I've, uh, uh, as I visit Houston and talk to old friends that are, you know, power marketers, power traders, they will suddenly, it will occur to them, wait, you generate your power in the middle of the afternoon, you know, for the large part, yes, we do. And it's sold into the power market, yes, and it's a perpetual physical long position in the market, correct? Well, couldn't I go trade that as a peak gas position? Yes, you could. Wow, that's potentially worth a lot of money. So I think people, will, as our presence in the generation mix, people will begin to understand that this, this fuel displacement or this fuel hedging element of the power is, is tangible value that people need to think about and value. You know, that kind of characterization of solar, it's, Houston's one of the few places you'll get that. There's an awful lot of energy <laughs> traders down here. But the other thing that struck me uh, that I think has been very influential in the power business, it's not a coincidence that nuclear plants are big or that coal plants are the size they are, and that uh, there is actually economies of scale that you've been able to observe in solar. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. You know, if you go from the very smallest installations, which are rooftop installations, which is not a business that we participate in, you know, you're st even today at anywhere from 250 to 450 a watt for the installation. When we look at our very large desert installations, you know, you're at uh, anywhere from a dollar thirty to a dollar fifty or a dollar sixty a watt. So your, your orders of magnitude different in terms of cost, um, and that's scale and there's a whole series of aspects of a project that are, are fixed in nature. Um, you have front-end engineering and design, you have, uh, have front-end permitting, you have some front-end mobilization costs, you have interconnection costs and the interconnection infrastructure. And a lot of those costs are going to have some fixed element to them. And, and it's material, and so to the extent you have greater uh, scale, you're going to amortize those costs over a greater number of kilowatt hours. You know, in addition, solar is a logistics business at the end of the day. Um, we have to move millions of panels to a location on a reliable schedule and then, and then assemble those panels. So having a reliable trained labor force in place is an important part of the process. And so at a very large installation, we can get to a very rapid installation rate and maintain that for a long period of time. <clears throat> At a smaller installation, by the time we get to that rapid installation rate, we're done with the project and we don't get the benefit of that site-specific uh, experienced labor force. So there are significant economies of scale. Well, I want to thank you. I mean, I think these insights really get to the, the fundamentals of investment, which is all about cost, performance, and risk. And I think you've given us a good sense for that. 
and also a view of kind of where this business is headed when you think of the economies of scale at work here. I think you know, what you've shared with us uh, this year at Sierra Week really does give people a pretty good indication of what may lay ahead. So again, let me thank you for being here. And I'd thank like you to for having us. Uh, hope that we've got you back in years to come uh, at our Sierra Week 2014. Thanks. <laughs>